All right, live. Welcome to my home. I've just had some something on my heart. It was a request for me to talk about it. I want to talk about it. I can talk about it because I be about it. I am what I'm talking about. So uh, this is for all the African-American males that's listening in this evening. Uh, by the way, happy pre-Thanksgiving. I know some of you guys don't celebrate Thanksgiving like that, but I uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, I just want to talk to uh, some black males, young and old. I mean, this is serious, hard to hard talk. As my partner Vera say, you letting the cat out the bag, and that's what I want to do. I want to let the cat out the bag today. I want to talk about real live issues. I want to talk about things that your pastor don't want to talk about. I want to talk about things that your father don't even want to talk about. I want to talk about secrets of men, how we think, how we live, how we get out. Black men. Now, some of y'all going to be mad at me, but that's okay. Pray for me. But I got to tell the truth. I have to tell the truth. So help me, God, even if it hurts me. And that's what I'm declaring today to tell the truth. I'm going to set the record straight. It's a lot of African-American male women out there. African-American male, females, I'm sorry. You guys are out there, and it's like, I look at, I see you, Sister Trina. I see you, I see you, I see you. It's like I look at some of you guys, I was like, wow, what's going to happen? I mean, you got, I mean, you, it's a shortage of African-American men. It's, it's a shortage. I mean, to men, it's like, man, we can have fun. It's like a kid in the candy store. You know, it's like maybe 10 to 1. I'm just guessing. I don't know the real facts. But today, I'm going to spit some language. So you young ladies, hey, Angel, how you doing? You guys, y'all better listen. Listen intensely because I'm going to tell it. I'm going to tell it because ladies, as an African-American male, and I consider myself as one. Some people don't like to be called black, a melanated black man, whatever you want to call colored, Negro, uh, black, African-American, whatever you want to call yourself. We have failed, you guys. We have failed the black woman. Uh-oh, somebody don't like what I'm about to say. But we failed the black woman. And I'm going to give some illustrations to back up my saying. Now, take it in mind. <clears throat> I'm 50 years old. I just made 50 last month on the 21st of October. So I've been through some things. I've seen some things. I've, I have observed some things. Hey, Nisha, how you doing? I got to, uh, I hope you can. you guys hear me? If you guys can hear me, let me see them hearts. So I want to make sure because I don't want you guys to miss this. I'm going to tell the truth, people. Listen, I'm going to tell you what your pastor won't tell you. I tell you, even your own father won't tell you. I'm going to tell you the secrets of men and what we like and what we don't like. I'm just trying to wait till a little bit more people come on so let you know this is about the males. I tell you, we want y'all to cook, clean, and we ain't giving y'all nothing to do it for. Hey, friend, how you doing? Was that uh, Pepsi? Uh, uh, Creed, I'm sorry. What's up? Uh, I had to re-look out my big screen. I got my big screen behind it so I can read you guys' comments. Trina, I hear you. And I'm going to tell y'all, men, now, I'm talking to men that say that you are a man. That's who I'm talking to. Now, if you live in your life as something else, I'm not talking to you, but I'm talking to the men, the masculine men, to say they're a man. No matter what, that's who I'm talking about. Hey, Charlene, what's up? I ain't talked to you in a long time. You abandoned me, Charlene. That's why I still love you. Uh, listen, people, black men, I'm addressing to you young black men. You young men, let me start with the young men first. 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. You becoming into adulthood. You live in a single parent home, no father. You probably know who your father is. I'm not going to take that away from you. 
and you're getting a little mustache and a little beard on your side and some down some hairs out in your personal area and I won't mention it and I'm gonna keep this video as clean as possible you know I watch my language I be careful what I say and how I say it and when I say it I'm talking to the 14 15 16 17 18 year olds right now bear with me the high schoolers the ones that think they tough the ones that grew up in the house that your mama told you that you was the king that you was the man and she know you are not a man. You are not a man until you can defend. Until you can defend, until you can go out there fend for yourself and protect your family. Well, you say, well, I'm under this star. I'm under that star. I got it. No, brother. I'm not talking about how many people you have shot or killed. I'm not talking about that. Let's keep it 100 now. We're talking about a man. That's what I'm talking about. A young man coming into adulthood. That's what I'm talking about. And I told my daughters, you better not bring me nobody home with their pants sagging down. I don't want that. A lot of you young men out there, you guys are not even qualified to even date. I'm sorry. You shouldn't even be having sex no way. The Bible tells us fornication is a sin. I'm just going to just tell y'all the truth. Listen, you young men out there that's having sex with these other teenagers, ladies, I mean consensual sex, I understand. You like boyfriend, girlfriend, and don't take, don't get me wrong. I'm not against love. I taught my children, I don't want you having sex at a young age. But I said, if you're going to have sex, I need to know if you know how to protect yourself. That's what I want to know. And when my oldest daughter told me, she said, well, Dad, I don't feel like, I don't feel comfortable talking to you about this. I said, I told my daughter, I said, listen, I've been in your life. I've never told or did anything to hurt you. Dad need to know. Because parents, let's admit, our youngsters, they're out there having sex. Whether you want to believe. You don't want to believe your little girl having sex. You don't want to believe your little son is having sex. And you're a denial. It don't take long. Don't take long. Trust me. It don't take long. But you young men that's coming into adulthood, that you stand up to adults, and when you get beat down like an adult by another grown man, then you want to scream, I'm only a minor. Then you want to run and go get your gun. Uh-oh. Charlene said, they not leading them. They are led by destruction, the street music. And that's so true. I'm going to get to that music too. I'm going to get to that music. You young men, you think you tough, don't you? Because you shot this person. You got away once. You shot another person, killed them. You got away twice. You shot another person three times. You got away and you got away and got away. But let me just tell you something, young man. Let me tell you a secret. And y'all know I'm the crime chaser. Imagine how many crime scenes that I've been on and I've seen people laid on the pavement with a white sheet over them or getting ready to get put in ambulance due to gunshot violence. And imagine how many those people that got shot became a victim of gunshot violence because you had shot somebody. Well, your mother don't know. You're an angel in your mother's eyes. That's an old saying that the old folks can witness to this. Loving eyes don't see no wrong. Not my child. Yes, your child. Your child is a menace not only to your household and to his neighborhood. That's, he is a menace. That's what he is. He's drinking, he's smoking, and he has no guidance, and he has no respect for human life. He don't have respect for his mother. He don't have respect for women. And he don't want to go to school. Young men, I got to tell it. You don't deserve to have a girlfriend. I'm going to go a little further than that. Only thing you deserve is keep your mind focused on your school and your books. Because once you go out there and have a baby in your teenager's years, you ain't doing nothing but causing trouble for somebody else's household. Because you, you you're making a baby that you know you can't take care of. 
You don't even know how to be a man. You're not mature enough to be a man. You might get away and beat up a man, a drunk man, or steal on him, punch him, and knock him out or something. I'm telling you, young man, stay in your lane. I'm getting to the old ones. Just hold on. Hold on. Young men, listen. Let me tell you something. I hear some of you conversations when I'm riding on a train and on a bus. And most of the time, you guys talking, you're not talking about nothing constructive. Nothing. Who you shot, who you gonna jay down on, who got the best loud, who got the jays. That's nothing. White people are laughing at you. You wearing your bank account on your body. Them Jordans that you stole and robbed for and put on your feet. $200 Jordan, $150 Jordans. Guess what? The, the young white man, he's putting his money up and saving it. And he's wearing the same thing over and over. And he's laughing all the way to the bank. While you got your bling bling on, your Jordans and your nice jacket and all that good stuff. You're wasting time, buddy. You're not preparing for nothing. You're living you're living just to be living, but you, you're you not even existing. You're not a threat. You already know your neighborhood is full of violence. What are you doing to help curb the violence? Or are you a part of the violence? Some of you young men I'm talking to, you've never been downtown. You're afraid to go downtown, but why? Because you're out of your element. You'll say it's too many white people. No, you feel intimidated. That's what that is. Because you're not no man. I'm going to tell you how to be a man and become a man. Some of you don't have fathers. Some of you fathers don't want to be bothered with their children. I'm going to be honest with you. Young men, some of y'all was made just your mom hooked up with somebody and they was having fun and they didn't use protection. So that's how some of you guys got here. Your mom ain't going to tell you that, but I'm going to tell you that. She was drinking. He was drinking. He was smoking. She was smoking. They seen each other. They lay eyes on each other, and they got together, and they made a baby. They didn't even get a chance to know each other. Now, let me say this. Babies aren't a mistake. I'll say that. Babies are innocent. So you are innocent, young man, when you come here. You didn't have nothing to do with your parents uh, coming here, having sex and all, and, and, and bringing forth you. You didn't have anything to do with that, if I may say it in those words. Nothing to do with that. But your mom is not going to tell you this. She was sleeping with this one and that one and this one. Your daddy was doing the same thing. That's how you got here. And now... Your mom won't tell you who your real father is because she ashamed you're going to find out how she was in her teenage years or, or become an adult or young adult years. Brother, mom got a lot of explaining to do. Pops, you got a lot of explaining to do. We as men, we got to step up to the plate. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to Get bit on old people. If I was a woman, I wouldn't date none of y'all guys because until y'all was able to prove that you could protect me and black men, we have failed the black woman. We are not willing to die for our black woman. First thing we make excuses, oh, she, she a skeezer, she a, she a hooker. I ain't doing no, uh-uh. Mm -mm. That's our sister. And we let anybody do anything to our black sister. And we don't stand up for We're cowards. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting myself in that too. Because the black woman, she's not going to tell you she don't feel safe under you. Well, somebody said, man, I kill for my woman. I'm not just talking about killing for your woman. I'm talking about standing up for your woman. Against any ethnicity. Against anything. Not just another black man. Anybody that come up to black woman. We should guard her with our life. And if we're not willing to die for our women, 
We don't deserve to have it. We don't deserve to have babies. Simply said, I'm saying it and I'm a man. Listen, black men, we got to step up. Every time I'm out in these streets trying to help, all I see is women, 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 women. No men, very few men, very few men. And men, you out there talking about the homosexuals and the bisexuals and the DL men. And look at you, you supposed to be the real man. Show them how to be a man. Show them how to be a real man. Show them how it's done. Tell them, watch you. You got a certain race out here that believe Christopher Columbus discovered America and will die for that lie. You got a certain race of people out here that believe in Santa Claus, St. Nick, come down to Trembling, will die for that lie. Black man, what would you die for? You would die for the six-point star. You would die for the five-point star. You would die for if I step on your toe, if I mean mug you, you would die for that. You would die if I run off with some drug money. You would die. You would die for that. But you won't die for your woman. You won't protect your woman. I see a lot of y'all black men. You watch these young ladies work in these foreign-owned stores, and you know who I'm talking about. I'm trying not to call names out, but I can't sugarcoat it. And he and they talk to your women any kind of way. I was in the store, corner store by my house, and I seen a foreigner talking to a black sister. I said, man, you ain't going to talk to that sister like that. And I meant it, every bit of it. And I was in his store. So you don't talk to those sister like that. And some of you sisters, you don't know how a man's supposed to treat you. You more than a pair of pampers and milk at $25 and $30. You more than that. Everybody that smile at you don't like you. You got people out here that want to use you, young lady. And your body is nothing but a playground to have fun with. He's not trying to get to know you. If he can't protect you, he can't stand up for you, and he can't go out there and make things happen for you, he don't deserve you. And I tell my daughters that. I got four daughters. Three of them are grown. Get you a real man that's going to stand up and have some morals about himself that's going to die for you. That's going to love you. That's going to protect you. Not on you, his family. And all my church people out there, I'm talking to the saved and sanctified and righteous people. I'm upset at some of you guys. You said, well, well, why you say that? I got my life together. I'm upset because if you let an intruder come in your house and rape your wife, what are you going to do? Brother, man, bishop, what are you going to do? You going to stand there and let him rape your wife? Or you going to say, thou shalt not kill. That's what you going to say. Brother, the Bible said there's a season and time and purpose for everything. My sanctified brother, my church brother, don't be no punk. Protect your wife. Stand up for your wife. If a man come against your wife, you better come hard at him. And if it costs you your life, you better lay it down for your wife and your family. Martin Luther King said it no better. He said a man, a man is not fit to live if he can't find something to die for. Die for your family. Black men, we got to protect our black women. We have to protect our black women. My partner Vera and I, we work on missing, please come home. It's so many young ladies are being kidnapped. So many of them are running away. Where are the fathers? Where are you? Where are you? And don't tell me you got another woman and you taking care of somebody else's kids and you not even taking care of your kids. Oh, that's a no-no. That's a no-no, brother. We don't do that. Cowards do that. And you're going to let another woman tell you not to take care of your child, your birth child? That's a no-no, brother. That's cowardness. A woman loves a man, a strong man. Strong, that's willing to die. And we're not protecting our women. People, I had to say it because black men, we have failed the black woman. 
And we are cowards when it comes to our women. We have not given our women nothing to admire us. We won't fight. We'll fight each other, but we won't fight the powers that keep us in captivity. We won't fight them. We'll get along and go along. People, let me just say this. Brothers, we got to do better. We got to step up to the plate. You want your wife to cook. You want your wife to clean. You want your girlfriend to cook and clean. You want your wife or your girlfriend to do special things in the bed, in the sexual bed, and I'm not trying to keep it clean. But you haven't given her nothing to do those things, to reward you with those things. You won't take out the garbage. You won't go out there and, and get no job. You won't help her. And most of the women are the breadwinners. But she go out there and make all the money. At least you can have a bath water run if you're not working. At least you can have a house clean. Then you, you got her car. You late picking her up from work. Something wrong with you, brother. Now, I believe, I can't tell a man how to run his house. Listen, brother. Only thing I can tell you is support your woman. Don't be late picking her up from work in her car. Don't do that, brother. Don't bring another woman in your house when your woman is not there. Don't do that, brother. And if you got a sexual appetite that you can't help but have two or three other women, don't bring them in your house. Respect your house. That's your castle. That's your castle, brother. That's how you do that, brother. You got her car. You driving her car, and you late picking her up because you got another woman in there. That's not being a man. That's coward. That's being a coward. That's wrong. And older brothers, such as myself, we want these youngsters to respect us. As Mark Carter say, when we pull our pants up, well, when we start wearing our pants correctly, they'll pull their pants up. We give the young brothers nothing to respect. All we do is tell these young brothers lies. Man, when I was your age, I shot three people down on 54th and low. I shot this, and you lying. You lying, brother? It, that didn't have go. But did you tell a young man that when you got locked up in prison uh, for eight years that you was somebody's uh, girlfriend? Did you tell him that? Did you tell a young man that you was sleeping with other men while you was in prison? Did you tell him that? You're not going to talk about that. Did you tell them members of your own gang raped you? Did you tell them that? Did you tell them that you raped young men while you was in prison and took their manhood? Did you tell them that, brother? No, you didn't tell them that part, but you told them who you shot. You told them who you robbed. You told them what dope man you stuck up. You kept the fire burning. Older man, quit telling these young brothers these stories. That's a better way for our young men. A better way. Some of you older brothers, you, you can tell these younger brothers about these experiences, but you won't tell them. You won't tell them. Tell them about your prison experience. When them guys tried to rape you. Tell them about that. Tell them how you was lusting after a transgender woman in prison. You won't tell them that. Tell them, if you go out there and kill your best friend and you get caught, you're going to get 80 years, 80% 80 of the time or day for day. Tell them that. Tell them how when you was in prison, your rappy didn't send you no money. He didn't come and see you. He didn't come to court for you. Tell them that. Tell them when you was in prison, your rappy hit your woman. Tell them that, brother. We got to talk to our young folks. We got to tell them the truth. Tell him, my brother, listen, talk it out first. Some things can be talked out, worked out before you go get that pole, that trigger, that pistol, that heat, whatever you want to call it. Some things can be worked out, brother, because your feelings was crushed. You got beat up in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Now you want to come back and grab a pistol and you want to shoot somebody in the head. Why they ain't looking? You ain't mad enough to fight them. At least if you get whooped, you could live another day. I've been embarrassed. I've been fought. 
I won some, I lost some, but I'm still here. I'm 50 years old. Some of you young brothers, you're going to live to see 22 and the way you're living. You're disrespectful to your mama. You don't regard for human life. You have no fear of God. None. And parents, quit sending your children to church and you don't go with them. Go and sit with them. See what's going on inside these churches. Just don't send your child to church, to church on Sunday or Saturday and have a church babysit them because you want Leroy to come over and have sex with you. I'm telling the truth. I know you don't want to hear. I'm telling you something that your pastor not going to tell you. I'm going to be straight up with you. This is the truth. And this is what I see. I'm 50 years old. I see some of y'all drop the kids off at the daycare. And you didn't even have to work that day. Instead of spending time with your child. Well, you know, I'm off these next two days. My children are not going to the daycare. I'm going to spend some time with them. You're already away from your children for eight hours. I'm telling it. I'm t I have to tell it. Young man, youngster, don't get sent off by these older guys my age. Don't let them send, send, them, send you off. I'm not against young men protecting themselves. I'm not against that. I believe you should protect yourself. But I believe there are some situations that you can talk out before it become a pistol play. I believe that. And another thing I don't believe in, men, y'all beating these women up. And I know I've been there. I fought women. I'm not going to lie to you. My life wasn't no prep book. I tell you, it wasn't. But men, please don't hit on these women. Please don't. Because you got some daddies out here will kill you. And you looking at one right now. You put your hand on my door. I, I ain't going to have no mercy on you. I'm, I'm just going to be real, real with you. I'm not going to have no mercy with you. And that's not a threat. I don't threaten no man. I love my daughters. They're beautiful. Trust me. If you need to hit a woman, you don't need to be with her. I'm sorry. You just don't need to be with her. There's other ways of handling things. And women, uh, if you can't do right by your man, leave him alone. Leave him alone. Because some men out here play for keeps. And some women out here play for keeps. You can't sleep with this one and that one. Some women ain't going for that. So I'm telling the men, keep your hands to yourself because that's being a coward, whipping on women. And you, you whooping on a woman like she a man. Then when a real man come up and confront you, you don't want to fight. You want to run and get a pistol. But you'll beat that woman and slap her around. But when her brother and father come at you, you want to go get a pistol. You want to threaten to kill them. That's what you want to do. That's a coward. That's a coward. That's what it is. And I better not catch none of y'all punks hitting on my daughter. None of y'all. Trust me. The police ain't gonna be able to save you. Your preacher ain't gonna be able to save you. Because, listen, I ain't afraid to die. Just as I'm much as ready to kill, I'm ready to die. I tell you, for what I love and what I believe in, I don't have a problem dying. Nobody's gonna live forever. By, matter, what, matter of fact, I'm 50 years old. I probably got more days uh, behind me than I got in front of me. Young man, older male, stand up and be a real man. A real man would die for his family, would take care of his family. He would make a way for his family. He would protect his family. Not only any, any male, any female. When you go in these stores and you see these foreigners talking crazy to your woman, step up. Say, brother, you ain't going to talk crazy to her. Our women like that because they ain't gonna bring their women around you for you to even get, they ain't gonna give you a chance to even look at their woman. We have to protect our woman. Our women are the carriers of life, they carry life inside their stomach, they're the fertilizer, and we're we have the seed. We have to respect each other, we have to love on each other. I'm just talking to the men. Men, I love you guys. I love you. And I'm talking to straight men. You know, the men that say you masculine, the ones that say, hey, I'm a man, I'm this. And I'm talking to those that becoming a man. I love y'all. I love you. But we fail our women. Our women don't have nothing to look up to. 
Nothing. We can't protect them. We can't bend with them. We can't protect them. We can't do nothing for them. Black men, we got to find something else outside of selling dope and shooting each other and robbing each other to do, to make our race better. I tell you, we really do. We really do. I'm just telling the truth, and I'm not perfect. I got a lot. I got a lot of flaws, and I could be a better father. As I made a video yesterday, I wanted to be on 26 in Michigan so bad yesterday, but I had to do my duty as a father. I had to spend time with my girls. I had to love on them. I had to sit down and eat with them and talk with them and see where they at. Guess what? If I don't, they got all type of wicked devices out there, wicked people waiting on them. And trust me, our women are running away. Our young ladies, they're running away. They're leaving home. And women, sister said it. She said, we are protecting ourselves. It's backwards. Yes, I've seen women go hard at protesting men. I see young ladies outside 4, 5 o'clock in the morning with one in the arm, one in the stroller, waiting on the bus to go to work to make it happen for the kids. I've seen it. That's a sign of strength, doing what they have to do. Men, we have to do better. We have to do better. Well, somebody said, well, and anytime you build, man, you build from the bottom up. You don't build from the top and go up. You start from the bottom. That's what it is. I'm just telling you, man, if you want to be a man, this is what it takes to be a man. I'm speaking out of experience, from observation. I'm not going by what nobody told me. This is what I see. If you think I'm lying, man, get on CTA bus. You see more women drivers than men drivers now. I remember when they first started letting women drive CTA bus drivers. I'm talking about black women. Well, somebody says it's the system that's designed like that. Okay, since we know the system is designed like that, what are we going to do about it? we just going to sit and pout and hopefully uh, things will change? It's not going to happen. The Bible said faith without works is dead. And I told you guys, prayer and do nothing, that's, that ain't about nothing. You got to pray. If you ask God for a job, that means you pray for a job. That means you going out there, fill out a resume. You looking online. You networking. You're not standing still. I'm not buying that. Just leave it to the Lord and, and, and let the Lord work. No, it don't work like that. Your preacher not going to tell you. It don't work like that. We serve a God of action. You got to stand up, man. Who are you when you put the pistol down? Who are you when you get around a different race of people? Who are you? Where's your courage? When the white folks call you in downtown in the court chambers, who are you, black man? And let me tell you something. Don't you ever let nobody tell you voting as a black man mean nothing to our race. If it didn't mean nothing to our race, look at these people. Why do you think they're trying to take our voting rights away? It means something. It has power. But it's no power if you're thinking this way and they're thinking that way and we're not together. And as I always say, black people, if we come together, we don't have to kill one soul. We are the world's greatest nuclear bomb. All we have to do is come together on one accord, and say, we're going to do this as a race. Look at Black Wall Street. Those people, they was determined. They was focused. They was focused. And guess what? They died protecting Wall Street, their property and their businesses, too. They died. What are you willing to die for? Outside of this star, that star, your neighborhood that you don't even own a, a house on that block. What are you willing to die for? I see so many of you guys dying for nothing. You dying because he slept with your girlfriend. You dying because you ran off with somebody's drugs. You dying because you was on this side of uh, Cottage Grove and you know you're not the block. You dying for stupid stuff. 
nothing. That means nothing. Let me help you out, black man. When you think of Michael Jordan, you think of basketball. When you think of Tiger Woods, you think of golf. When you think of tennis, tennis, you think of Serena Venus. When they think of you, what would they say? Would they say coward? He wasn't a man. What would they say? What would they say, black man? What would they say? Give your woman something to stand up for. Give your woman something to stand up for. And some of y'all can't afford to die. You don't have no life insurance. You're on social media, you're showing a lot of money. But when you get killed, there's no money. No money. Black men, we have to do better. We have to do better. The black family is suffering. As New Era Chicago say, Eric always say, black man, your race needs you. I'm speaking, I'm speaking to black people right now. We're not making no more excuses, the white man doing this. We're not making no more excuses. We already know his game. Now, what are we going to do to come back his game? Like the sister said, we die for things that don't have no meaning. None. I love y'all black men. I love the black sisters. I wish I was perfect. But I'm not. And I have to do better. Sometimes, some people look at me like, oh, you think you, I'm not that, people. I go places where your pastor won't go. I say things that your pastor won't say. I tell you things that your pastor won't tell you. I keep it 100 with you. I'm talking in 2018 terms. That's what I'm talking in. That's what I'm talking in, people. I'm not quoting a thousand scriptures. There's nothing wrong with scriptures. But how's your love, pastor, for your people? That's what I'm talking about. Impress me with your love. My spiritual brother and my spiritual sister. How dwell is the love of God in you? Black people, we have become monsters. We have come become the one that have oppressed. We have come just like the one have oppressed us and is still oppressing us. We kill like that at the drop of a hat. I don't like the way he looked at me. So I pull out a gun and I shoot you. Shooting in a crowd of people that have not done anything to you. Don't even know you. That's not even in your beef. And you take a gun and shoot and shoot and shoot. Something wrong with you, young man. Your thinking is not straight. That's not being a man. That's a coward. That's not defending yourself. That's the cheap way out. Go to your enemy. Go to him. Don't kill people around your enemy. Go to your enemy. You say he did something to you. You go to your enemy. Confront him. Talk to him first. Work it out before you grab that gun. You might not have to kill him. Just get an understanding. I'm just saying, people, if y'all want to stop the violence, just start loving on each other and let's, let's protect our households, our women, our sisters. Let us quit passing our women around to different races and stuff like that. And, and, and let us respect our women. And women, y'all have to respect us as well. You got to dress appropriately. I can't tell you how to dress. And men, we, we, we go with what we see. If we'll see a stop sign, we're going to stop. So what you present to us is what we see. A good girl don't dress like a bad girl. And a bad girl definitely don't dress like no good girl. I love y'all sisters. But this is really not to y'all, but I had to say this. But I'm focused on the men right now. The young men. Young men, love your brothers. Let's talk it out.
man. Let's cease this violence, man. It's about nothing, man. Let's give these people back their drugs. Let's love on each other, man. We're killing each other, man. Some of y'all can't even come outside and enjoy the weather, man, without being afraid of getting gunned down, man. You don't leave the neighborhood. You say this your block. You say this your But you don't own nothing. You living in your sister, low-income housing. You living in your mama basement. You living in your girlfriend's house. You're not even a contributor. All you there, you're a toy. You're a sex toy. That's what you are. You're not a man. You're a sex toy. That's what you are, man. You're a baby man. You won't go out there and work. How you gonna tell your girl you out there hustling, but you never come back with no money? Oh yeah, I wanna talk about you little petty hustlers. I always say you out there selling this and selling that, but you don't never bring no money back home. You out all night long. You got your phone on silent. You got a lock on your phone. If I was a woman, I wouldn't deal with you. You gonna unlock that phone. I'm taking care of you. I'm gonna know what's going on, who you with. I'm telling y'all. People, ladies, don't buy these men that's out there hustling and don't never bring no money back to the house. Something is wrong with that picture. You're being taken. You're being had. And I'm not against love. I told y'all that. Everybody needs somebody. I can't tell you who to fall in love with you. But don't be no fool. Don't be no fool. Make us as men step up to the plate. Make us go out there and do what's right by you and the children. Make us step up to the plate. I challenge the women. Make us step up to the plate. Seriously. I appreciate y'all for listening. This was on my heart. And normally I don't talk about this in the public. I do it like a one-on-one, -on -one, but I had to let it out. As Vera said, I had to let the kid out the bag. I love y'all. Y'all know I do. I go out there and bring you news. I risk my life and things like that. I don't have to do this. But I'm going to tell you this. I love you guys. And I want to see, as a race of people, I want to see us spiritually growing and financially, economically. All of it. All, the whole complete package. I don't want us as black people have the buy and buy mentality. I'll get mine when I die. You can get yours right here right here on Mother Earth. You can get yours right here. Your part. You can get it. Don't let nobody tell you you don't have you you don't have the right to eat and live and protect yourself. Black man, that shouldn't be a law in the United States. Say that you can protect yourself as being a human being. Cats got claws. Dogs got teeth. Snakes Got venom. And don't you think we're better than the animals? And we can't protect ourselves? I don't think so. That young man that got gunned down to save them lives out there, Robbins, he's a hero. He gave his life protecting others. That's a man. He's a hero. To that police officer, that Mexican police officer, that died in the line of duty. He's a hero. You can say whatever you want about the police. But this particular officer, he died helping people. He died. He was a hero in my book. You can say whatever you want about the police. But he was a hero. He's a hero in my book. Seriously, he was. He died protecting women. Well, somebody said that's his job. Yeah, that is his job. But he didn't have to go to that call. It was a 10-1, and they called off. He could have waited till the other backup officers came before he tried to uh, apprehend or pursue the person that was doing the shooting. So my condolence to the family of the police officer and to all the families out there in that tragic yesterday. And even to uh, the police shooting today, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was a teenager. I don't know. But condolence to uh, these families, if it's a death, I'm not sure. I don't want to say that. But black men, we have to die for our sisters. We have to stand up for our sisters. 
nowhere in the world back in the day when those white folks came in the Emmett Tillman uh, grandfather home and took him away. They should have been stepping over dead bodies to grab Emmett Till out of that house. That's what they should have been stepping over, dead bodies. That's what they should have been stepping over. You want the white man to respect you? Give him something to respect you for. Show him. Give him something to respect for. Show him that you are a man, that you can fend for yourself, and you can protect your woman. You ever show him. One thing I admire about the white man, I must say this. They'll die for what they believe in. And they know some of the stuff is a flat-out lie, but they'll die for it. Black man, what are you willing to die for? I want to know, what are you willing to die for? What are you willing to give your life for, black man? You want to be equal with the white man. You want equal rights. You want to be treated equal as the white man. But you're not willing to die like the white man. Black man, look at our neighborhoods. We can't even stop the violence in our own neighborhood. The white people, they're going to Mars. Look at the two different mindsets. We trying to figure out like how to stop the violence in our neighborhood and it's not happening. And white people, they on the way to Mars. The two different mindsets. Give you another mindset. Take a black and a white person in the same classroom. Black person, you in there so you can get a good job when you get out of college or school. The white person mindset, said, hey, I'm going to build me a company. I'm going to be the CEO. That's two different mindsets. Two different mindsets, people. Black people, we got to elevate our thinking. We got to be the conquerors. Conquerors that we are. Show our black women so they can praise us and worship, worship us. Honor us in a way. Give them something. And you know, and I always say, only time you see black, black male and female get along is in the bed when they land down. Outside of that, it's like it's chaos there at each other throat arguing. We got to give our sisters something to love, brothers. We got to fend for our sisters. We making all these babies. And we are not stepping up to the plate. Well, somebody said, well, I don't have no money. You don't take money. Just pick them up sometime, him or her, and spend a little time with them. Walk through the park or beach. It's free to walk in the park. Get on the bus. Get on the train with them. Spend a little time with your baby. Show them, show them, show them what a man look like. Tell them you love them. Kiss them. Say, hey, right now, dad is hurting. I can't buy all the things that I know you deserve, but I won't let you know. I came by here to see you, hug you, spend a little time with you. That's what you do, dad. And those dads that pay child support, that's cool. But still spend some time with your child. Please do that. Elevate your mind, as Sister Katrina says. Elevate your mind. Man, I'm not perfect. I need help too. I'm going to step up to the plate. I'm going to be everything I tell you to be. And we can be in this together. We need men to stand up and take, and for us to take this thing to another level. We laughing at the Spanish people saying they working for free. Man, listen. Spanish people spending money. They buying property. They educating themselves. They working hard. They doing the things that we used to do. That's what they're doing. And trust me, they're getting paid. Come in Inglewood and see who buying up all the property. Come in Inglewood and you'll see. You laughing. You making fun of them. But they doing their thing. And I ain't mad at them. Black man, when are you going to do your thing? When are you going to do your thing? You trying to be something that you're not. Let's build, black man. Let's work together. Let's work together. I appreciate you. I love you guys. Pray my strength. I mean to be what all God called me to be. Help me to be the father. Help me be the example to my race. Help me be a pillar 
in my community. Lord, help me be that. That I want to be. That's what I want to be. Let's get it together. And, and, and black people, let me say this to another of you black men and all you black politicians out there. Listen. Don't come to us if you don't have a, a, a black agenda on your program. Well, I'm going to be the mayor of everybody. No, I need to know your agenda. As May say, what's in it for the black people? I need to know it. I respect Harold Washington. Harold Washington came in the door saying what he was going to do. That was a man. That was a man. They had to knock him off. Phone ringing, people. Brother calling me. But I appreciate you guys. I'm not going to get off right now, but I got to uh, do some things. Uh, listen up, people. Let's step our game up, black men, black women. Let's step our game up. Even if you're not with the baby mama, even if you're not the, with the wife, step your game up. Step your game up. Love on your children because your children need you. Trust me. They need their father. You have a lot of people out here that's in some things that they don't know how to get out. But dad, you have the answer. You have the key. You could point them in the right direction by showing them love, by calling them, spending time with them, showing them what you've been through. I appreciate you. God bless you. God keep you. Stay strong, black man. And young man, don't listen to that older male unless he's talking constructive. If he's talking about shooting and killing, get away from him because he's going to send you off and you're going to be in prison for all your life or you're going to be dead or poor with nothing. Peace out.